What's the scariest you've ever acted towards another human being, part five? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing us. Account one. When I was a senior in high school, my little brother was in sixth grade. During football season, he had to ride the bus home from school instead of riding with me because I had practice and my parents didn't want him hanging around the school waiting for me. One day I get home and he is acting kind of strange, and I notice a red mark on his cheek after some convincing. He tells me that some high school kid had hit him and was messing with him in general since the school year had started. He didn't know his name, so I told him to find out the next day. The next day, he tells me the kid's name. I have no idea. So I start asking some of the sophomores on the football team who he is. Well, word gets around the locker room what happened to my little brother. Now all the guys want a piece of the action. I don't want to hurt the kid, just scare him a lot. So with a group of about seven, eight football players behind me, I confront the kid and in so many words tell him that if he ever even looks at my little brother again, I will end him. Word quickly spread. Everyone knew who my brother was and that you stayed away from him. Account two. I was out running this summer and got hit by a car that blew a stop sign I dove onto the hood and rolled off as he came to a stop. With no hesitation, I got up and kicked his grill in. I went to town on it. American history. Ex-curb stomped the shit out of it. He got out and asked if I, he should call an ambulance. I yelled, yeah, for you motherfucker, you're going to need it. I looked over and I saw his wife and son in complete shock. I felt like a dick. I ran another two miles. I couldn't walk the next day. Account three. I got into an argument with an acquaintance at a fair-sized gathering. His name was Alex, and he was with a friend, don't remember his name, call him Bill. I'm pretty quick-tempered, but I usually manage to keep myself under control. I threatened to choke him, he said. You don't have the balls. Bill did this retarded grin and nod thing, not a second after he had finished the sentence. I gripped his neck and choked him till he passed out. Account 4. Last night, an ex-girlfriend was over, she was going to stay over, ended up getting mad and decided she wanted to leave. Said something and I got really angry, opened up the door, pushed her out and slammed the door shut. This wasn't enough though. We had just bought a pizza, had maybe three slices, I grabbed it, opened up the door and threw it down the stairs. Still in the box, I guess it hit her. She started to cry and left. I sat on my bed, happy for a few seconds. Now you're just as pissed as me, was all I could think. Five seconds later, I felt awful. Walked downstairs, cleaned up the pizza sauce, and dip all over the place and chucked out the pizza. Crazy bread was still good, though. It was delicious. Account 5. I was once held at syringe point. The person simply walked up and held the syringe in my face and said, Give me your wallet or I'll stab you. My reaction was both a moment of epic stupidity coupled with total badassery because I said to him, you'd best kill me on the spot with that syringe. If you don't, I will wholesale fuck you up. I stepped back, then throw my wallet at him and he dropped the syringe. So I reached out and grabbed him by his fringe and drove my knee into his face, which dropped him. Once I worked out, he was breathing. I put him in the recovery position and walked away. I remember shaking for hours afterwards. I had four or five panic attacks during the following month. Account six. I was super drunk and sitting at a bar. I finished my beer and drunkenly threw the bottle behind me. It smashed right next to some guy who then violently approached me and said, Hey man, did you throw that fucking bottle at me? I said drunkenly. Yeah, I did. He goes, I'm gonna fucking kick your ass. I screamed back. Oh yeah, cause I'm gonna jerk you off. That's right. Take that fat cock out and let me jerk you off. He sits stunned. Then the whole bar started chanting, Jerk him off, jerk him off, jerk him off, the guy said. You're a freak, man. And walked out of the bar. It was a pretty solid night. Account seven. About 20 minutes into a rugby match last year, and there was this one girl who was firing off racist insults towards my team. And I... Now this girl was very full of herself. The whole smirk over the shoulder at you. Walk with her chin in the air sort of thing. If that wasn't enough to piss everyone off, she decided she was going to scream like a banshee whenever anyone wrapped her for a tackle. 
No idea why. She was just one of those people you really want to slap with a fish covered in thumbtacks. Anyways, whenever this girl got tackled, she would wait a while before releasing the ball when she was on the ground instead of almost immediately like you were supposed to. The ref was flat out ignoring it and I was getting pissed off. So next time she got tackled and refused to release the ball, I simply leaned over, looked her in the eyes and screamed in my best, I'm a scary rugby chick voice, give me the motherfucking ball. Now, apparently. A skinny blonde girl in a scrum cap and a mouth guard screaming at her was enough to for her to flip shit. Imagine deer in the headlights while getting electrocuted and launch the ball straight into my open arms. Needless to say, she wouldn't make eye contact with me for the rest of the game. TLDR scared the shit out of a bitch during a rugby game because she was getting on everyone's nerves. Account 8. Not really scary, but OP's story reminded me of it. When I was in high, a Hispanic kid got in my face and started calling me a faggot and saying, What you gonna do about it, faggot? I licked from the tip of his nose up to the bridge. We were face to face and whispered, You ever had your shit pushed in by a big old white boy before with a smirk on my face? He went ghost white and never bothered me again, TLDR, licked and threatened to rape a kid who tried fighting me. Account 9. I have a cousin who used to answer his door when JWs would ring in his own individualistic manner. Now keep in mind, he was 5'6", 230 LBS, most of it beer. He would answer dressed only in his whitey tighties, with a joint in one hand, a beer in the other, and say, what the fuck do you want? They eventually avoided his house entirely. Account 10. I was hanging out with some friends in town when a guy walked past and called me something like, fucking emo whore. I was 15, 16 at the time, and I was used to comments like that because even if I wasn't emo, I still dressed differently and had black hair. This time I just snapped. I stopped. Started walking towards him yelling, hey, what the fuck did you just call me? And then I spat him in the face. Then I just walked back to my friends that looked kind of chalked but impressed. I had to sit down. Too much adrenaline. Ten minutes later, the dude comes back. With 20 fucking friends, I start to panic on the inside. It's just me, my then boyfriend and lady friend. Like, what the fuck should we do at this point? Anyway, the guy I spat in his ugly face started harassing me again and told me to show him my arm to see if I had any scars. I was in fact a cutter at that point in my life, so was about to show him my scar-free arm instead. Just as I was about to show it, I snapped again and jumped the guy and just started hitting him and screaming like a mad person he freaked out because that was probably not what he was expecting from a 5'1 short emo girl. Him and his friends left us alone after this. I have never done anything like this since that. Now I only use my words instead of my spitting fists. Account 11. I was in 6th or 7th grade. Kid in my gym class started calling me a fag repeatedly for no reason. This went on for a few weeks. Finally, I decided to tell him that I'd had enough and told him if he called me a fag one more time, he would regret it. So, of course, he called me a fag again, and I punched him in the stomach so hard he fell to the ground and started crying. The second he hit the ground, I jumped on him UFC style and started punching the shit out of his head. He was just screaming, I'm sorry, and bleeding profusely from his nose. I couldn't stop myself, though. A couple of kids pulled me off of him, and I eventually chilled out and walked away. To this day, I feel horrible about it. A few days later, he stopped going to our school. The rumor was that his mother caught him parading around his house in her dirty underwear and was sent to some sort of group boy's home. Account 12. Someone stole a few things from a C-130 during the constitutional referendum in Iraq. I was working security. The SSGT in charge of us told us, I'm going to jack this guy up. Make sure nothing goes wrong. So he beat the shit out of this guy, accused him of being a sadrist, and cuffed him before taking him to detention. We stood there and pointed our guns at people and told them they would die if they moved. That was basically the worst thing I ever did to another person. I pointed a loaded M16A2 at someone and told them they would die. The scary part was, I wasn't joking. Account 13. After my freshman year of college, I opted to move into a house with two buddies for the summer. My other option being to move back in with my parents in the small rural community I grew up in. 
the type of place where people don't lock their doors. Everyone knows everyone, etc. The city where my college is has a fair amount of crime. Went to a big state school, something I really knew nothing about, having been conditioned to trust people and not anticipate crime. So one night about 10 p.m. I decided to make a Walmart run for some groceries. Strange, I know, but it seemed like a bright idea to this 19-year-old. I would generally park my Jeep Cherokee in our drive behind the house, just off the back porch, which was fairly well lit. So I yelled to my roommates, hey, heading out to Walmart, be right back, and continued out the back door, stepped off my back porch, took the 10 steps to my Jeep, and got my keys handy to unlock the driver's side door. Suddenly the door pops open just as I approach to unlock it. A guy I've never seen before jumps out, holding my new CD player, shit was MP3 capable which was baller at the time, in one hand and a flathead screwdriver about 18 inches long in the other, I was kind of in shock. It didn't immediately register with me what was going on and so I just kind of froze. After a second or two, I was between him and his escape route. It hits me what's going on and I say to him, just drop it, which he responded to by attempting to stab me with the screwdriver. Both of us are now in attack stances about three FT from each other when he whipped the screwdriver at me, hit me in the face and took off running into the night. CD player still in hand. I chase after him. I was a three-sport HS athlete and collegiate WR, yelling, I'll fucking kill you racist expletive. As I started to gain steps on him, I'm not a racist person at all. Blind rage completely took over, and I said what I thought would hit the hardest. Five blocks of pursuit, and I'm closing in on him. I'm about 30 feet away from him, my screams becoming increasingly primal, crazy. He ran, turned left, and I decided to cut the corner of the block and run behind the house on the corner. Ran into an 8F tall chain-link fence. He got away. I yelled out like Keanu Reeves when Schweizer got away in point break. If I had a gun, I would have fired a clip into the air, I'm sure. Had I caught up to him, it would have been a fight to the death. I turned back to go home and call the cops, exhausted, and realize I'm in the seediest, worst neighborhood I've ever seen. I'm missing a shoe, bleeding from my right cheek and still clutching my car keys. Called the cops who brought dogs and traced my pursuit, trying to pick up his scent but no luck. Got robbed, almost got stabbed. Went into a six-block sprint of lunacy, spewing racism through the hood. Account 14. There was this kid. He was a regular douche nozzle. The kind of guy you want to beat severely with a blunt instrument. He decides one day, Hey, I'm going to go after this faggot. Me and his faggot boyfriend. My faggot boyfriend. My boyfriend's words, not mine. So in the park, we're sitting there, chilling and being ambiguously homosexual by holding hands on a motherfucking park bench. And he speeds in on his little, mommy and daddy bought this for me so I would shut the fuck up before they chainsawed me to pieces and buried me next to the shed. Trick butt. He comes racing around a curve and tail whips my boyfriend's brand new mountain bike. We were 16. It was a big deal. Well, no sir, I thought. Not to fucking day. I chased his ass down on foot. He turned around to be all threatening. Now keep this in mind. I am trans, male to female, but I am not a weak woman. I work out. I'm a fighter. He's screaming in my face. I grab his handlebars and lift him and his little bike off the ground and slam him back down in a feat of pure rage-fueled adrenal fuckery, shutting him up. His fat fuck of a hillbilly inbred cousin decides, it's time to grab me. My boyfriend ends that plan fast with a swift punch to his already ugly nose. I stare him dead in the eye. Listen to me, lad. Ever touch me. My things, him or his things again, I will dismantle you. They will never find all of the pieces. I do what I want. Wrong answer. I was pissed. I was livid. I am lucky I didn't commit homicide and or be awarded a medal for a service to the human race. I flipped his twiggy ass off his bike, lifted it over my head and threw it 30 feet into a pond. He made a move towards me and I gave him a look my boyfriend later described as a glare that made my spine go cold and my heart skip a beat. 
You could literally see in your eyes that if he had made a move towards you, you were going to beat him to death and then perhaps eat his heart in front of his dying eyes. Please don't uh, ever look at me like that. Pissing myself sounds unpleasant. We went home and made cookies. TLDR dumbass decides to fuck with a trans woman and her admittedly flaggy boyfriend gets his bike in a pond and the death stare to end all death stares. Account 50. I was in southern Thailand traveling with two mates last summer. We were in a small town for just one night and managed to find the tourist hotel where most western travelers would go to. For some reason I just couldn't sleep that night and my friends had fallen asleep hours ago. At about 2 a.m. I heard some weird noises outside our door and my initial thoughts weren't that it was people having sex. But after I snuck out the door to investigate, sure enough people were definitely having sex. What sounding like just round the corner. It was a dark and still night. But the moon was out and my eyes could adjust after a short while. It was actually down this corridor. And in the bathroom, the building echoed due to the concrete surfaces. Quite creepy at night. So I snuck into the men's toilets, showers, and they were going at it on and off in the first cubicle on the right, in the row of five. I noticed two bare feet sticking out the bottom in a weird angle, and so I really couldn't visualize the way in which they were doing it. But anyway, I was a meter away from the door, and my heart was pounding. What would I do if the door suddenly opened? Before thinking about it much, I made a snap decision I was going to fuck around a bit. They were rustling around, but it wasn't loud enough for them to be having sex at that moment, so I assumed they were fingering or something. I inhaled a long breath slowly through my nose, then exhaled. They stopped what they were doing. It could have been by coincidence, but I knew they had hurt me. With my right hand, I snatched one of their ankles. They were both screaming. The door was rattling, and as I let go, I heard them whimpering, climb up onto the toilet seat. I had even scared myself at how evil I was preying upon their fear. But it felt good. They were quiet now and I walked down the corridor of cubicles silently into the communal showers which no light could reach. I waited a very long fifteen minutes before I heard them move again. They assumed I had left, and the door slowly opened with a head poking out to check it was clear. Guy, then girl, one after the other they tipped, towed out, holding their clothes. They had only put their underwear on by the looks of it. Just as the girl glanced round to look down the dark corridor, I walked towards her, chin down, looking right at her. Never have I seen a look of pure white fear come across a person's face like this. She let out a spine-shivering scream as she dropped everything and ran for the door. I could hear them both still screaming as they reached the door to their room and locked it. I creeped back to my room, snuck under the duvet and fell asleep. <laughs>